So on today's edition of Answering Questions No One Ever Asked, we're gonna see if we can't vacuum fill a system. The all new IQ Link ecosystem for Corsair finally removes all the cable clutter from your PC. IQ Link components synchronize RGB lighting and settings between connected devices with a single wire, creating a chain of devices on a single port via the Link Hub. Take control of your system and ditch the clutter by following the sponsored link in the description below. Look, many of you know I'm, a, I'm kind of a gearhead, right? I enjoy cars and working on cars and stuff. And one of the things that you do when you're filling up a cooling system in a car is you do it through a vacuum fill. You pull a vacuum through the system, right? Through a vacuum pump that's hooked up to an air compressor and you pull whatever amount of vacuum in the system. Then you cap that off and then you have a return line that's hooked up to the cooling system in a big jug and then the vacuum pulls the coolant back into the system. So I got to thinking like, you know, I've been using my, my little vacuum, actually it's a blower, not even a vacuum, a little pump here to empty out my systems, which actually works really, really well. So it just kind of got me to thinking like, what if I used a vacuum pump? And to be fair, this might be a bit overkill. I probably could have just used a hand pump and all I have to do is get what, minus one atmospheric pressure or 14 PSI or whatever that is, right? And then have a tube sitting inside of a jug to when I crack that valve back open, when it's under negative pressure or vacuum, it just is gonna fill up the volume with the coolant because the tube is in the coolant. As long as it doesn't pop out or pull in air, it won't pull in air, they'll pull all coolant. I'm just tired of some of these crazy systems that are really hard to get all the air out and having to tilt it and stuff. And Skunk Works being as big and heavy as it is, that just got me like, you know, I'm over it. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm going to get all the coolant out of this system. This is Nick's system here. This is an AMD rig. It's got a 7950X uh, in there. It's got, the, this is a 6800 XT. Um, it's just, it, the, the, the fluid is old. It needs to be drained. And so I want to give this a shot now. I've spent overall about $150 on parts. That would make sense to me because I do this all the time. So I just want to see if this would be a time saver or if I am about to find out the catastrophic failure point on vacuum in a water cooling system. I mean, we've already figured out where it fails pressure wise. That's at 140 PSI. <laughs> oh, <shit. laughs> ah! <laughs> now, admittedly, this video should not be taken as any sort of a tutorial. I'll be honest, I'm not entirely sure what it is that I'm doing. Uh, okay, so we have a T-fitting here. These are quarter inch flared fittings right here. This is the kind of thing that you would te technically be using for the most part for like filling HVAC systems and stuff. However, that's not what I'm doing here. So I don't know exactly what to expect. Oh, these two different, oh, uh, we have a problem already. But these are two different fitting types. Now I wanted to have this vacuum gauge hooked up to it, but I don't have, I don't have this. And that was just gonna tell me when we stopped creating vacuum. Like it would just be nice to know like, hey, the needle has stopped moving. Therefore we've got as much vacuum as we can create. And then I'll shut the valve off, undo the tube. And then that's under vacuum right there. I do have quarter inch thick wall tubing here cause I don't want this to collapse. I need the tube that goes from here to the pump to be rigid enough so that under vacuum, it's not gonna collapse. We, if these start to collapse, these are pretty stiff as well. That's kind of okay. Um, because that just means that, and I'm gonna tighten all these suckers up too. <laughs> that just means that uh, we've gotten a lot of air out of the system, but I definitely don't want the tube between the pump and the system collapsing. If that collapses and pinches off prior to getting all the air out, then that's not gonna work very well for us. This is ridiculously long for what I need, but it's actually fine. We, so Phil had a bright idea. He's like, wait, if this is too big, can you just put a tube on it? And yeah, the question, the, the answer is yes, I can. And it does create vacuum. Look, not quite 25, because 25, just under 25 is about where we're going to find that one, at, ne, one atmospheric pressure of vacuum. How do we, how do we describe that? <laughs> so atmospheric pressure is actually 29.93. Um, we're only getting about 23 to 23 and a half. So we're not getting a full negative atmosphere of pressure, but we should have plenty given the volume we're dealing with right here. So I'm gonna do a little test right now. So I, I, I had sent Nick to get a fitting for this, uh, which we technically don't need now, but I do still need a long enough tube to unthread this and have it go down into, we're not gonna use this one because I need to make sure I have, if I run out of fluid and it pulls in air, then the entire thing's, I have to start all over, right? We need it to fill all the volume with fluid. So I'll be using a fresh bottle of 
this stuff, which I, I guess this is actually long enough. Let me see. So is this long enough? Oh yeah, that'll work. Okay, maybe we'll just go for it right now. When the Nick comes back, we'll be like, hey, we did it. Because it's not a lot of volume, I don't know how fast it's gonna pull the fluid. It might go really quickly. It might just slowly, I don't know. We all think like, oh, space. If you were in space without a space suit, you'll just instantly invert into goop because of the pressure. No, all that'll happen is all the, the air in your body will just out of your lungs and your eyes will boil and your tongue will boil and then you'll just really hate life for about 30 seconds. Ooh. Okay, I'm gonna, for, you can hear all of the radiator fins going click, 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 like. You can hear them, right? Okay, okay. Dude, the radiators were imploding on themselves. There's no way that worked that well. <laughs> Did the whole system refill? <laughs> I think we're gonna find out. Let's close that off. Yeah, it's full. <laughs> is it really? Yeah, yeah, the pump's turning, look. Look, you can even see the red that was still in the rad and stuff coming out right there. Life just got so much easier. Five Do you know how many years. comments people, especially with those that are like, Jay, you're in automotive, why are you? Oh, there goes some air. Well, there's a little bit. So we're pausing the video here to show you, we think we figured out where the air actually came from. So Phil pointed out that when I lock the valve off right there, and then I take this hose off and plug it in, or dip it into the bottle here, this is full of air. So that vacuum pulled the fluid and the air back into the system with it. So we think that it actually, if I were to like have two valves on there and could dislocate or take the tubing out and then keep it under vacuum somehow and dip it in the fluid, that it would have 100% filled the system. But because there's air in the tube, that's what made its way back into the system. But I'll take a little bit of air versus what we normally have to deal with. All right, back to the video. The amount of people that are like, Jay, with the amount of automotive stuff you do and know why on earth have you not tried to do this. Now, to be fair, to get all of the air out, I think we would have needed to have this pump hit like the minus 29 uh, inch, or inches of mercury. But as long as we got it to fill enough to where the pump is moving fluid, which it is, and this level doesn't drop down below the pump, I just top it off here and we're good to go. What really, really made me want to do this today was filling fill system. Because <laughs> that was a pain in the ass like you've never seen. I want to drain it again and do it again for fun. I'm genuinely impressed, <laughs> if you want to know the truth. Okay, so Nick's back. Uh, hi. So you've seen me build water-cooled systems now for like 10 years, right? Forever, yeah. How much of a pain in the ass is the filling the system part? Depends how badly you routed it, or good, how well you routed. I like how you flipped that, oh, yeah. well. But you've seen it's usually like tossing and turning yeah. and flipping and yeah. just cuss cussing sometimes. Okay, so this is the way this works. We are going to take this off. Leave the valve closed for the moment. And I'm doing this all in real time. I wanna do this all in one take fill, just so people can see the actual time once the setup is ready, right? Which was nothing but more than plugging in the pump and then the gauges right there. Okay, so we're gonna take this, wrap this around right there. Now you might hear some scary sounds. We learned when it's under vacuum, the radiators like to go click, 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 as they're like oh, okay. compressing. <laughs> it didn't leak the first time, hopefully not this time. Uh, okay, so we're gonna open this up. Capped off everywhere, okay, we're good. We're gonna go to full pressure. That's the oil vapors coming out. Okay, so we're done. We're gonna close that off. Now we can turn that off. The system is still under full pressure, or full vacuum right now, because that valve is closed, right? So now we just take this guy, shove it way down in there, are you ready for me to fill the system? Yeah. Filled. Do it again. <laughs> no, it takes like 10 times longer to empty it now. <laughs> that was so cool. <laughs> right? So now if I close that back off and we go and plug in the system, so all we, what we got is enough of the system filled to get flow happening, which is what we need. Yeah. And then we just keep topping it off in the reservoir. I know, but what I want to do now is I want to like mount this pump down to like a piece of plywood kind of a thing and have the, the thing like always there and ready to go. Like just so it's like, okay, time to fill. <laughs> Done. Because if I don't have to drain a system, if it's a brand new build that's empty, that's how fast it would take to fill it <laughs> on a new system. So honestly guys, this pump I got from Amazon, it's the smallest one I could find. It's a bit overkill, but I do like running this pump now that I think about it because it reaches 
Like I could do this with a hand pump, but that would take a while, right? Um, this reaches that minus 24, or that, that, that is about 23 and a half. Phil was telling me that I would need like some crazy NASA grade molecular type of vacuum pump to ever get it to a full atmosphere, which we don't necessarily need, as you can see. <laughs> um, this was 65 bucks. There might be cheaper ones somewhere. I got this one because I'm gonna be using this all the time, as you can see, and it is perfectly fine for our use. This was a $15 gauge kit. Um, from Harbor Freight. Who knows how accurate it is, but at least it just tells me when the needle's not moving anymore, it means I've reached as much vacuum as this pump is gonna generate. And then obviously the tubing. So if you see any water cooling companies come out in the future with a vacuum fill kit, you know exactly where that fucking idea came from. Technically automotive, but I was the first to do it. It's my achievement, not yours. No one. And I mean, no one is selling a vacuum fill kit for PCs. If they are moving forward, you tell them JC Sense owns, uh, is owed a royalty on the idea of nature, technically. But I'm the first one to come up with, I, it could be like half this size, a little tiny pump. We don't need anything crazy, right? Like the small ones, like a tire inflator kind of a deal. But I will be filling every single system from now on this way, because every single one of my systems always have a drain valve, and that's exactly what we need to make this work. It has to have a valve. If you can't cap the, the system to keep vacuum, it won't work. So, and do yourself a favor. If you're like, hey, that seems like a great idea to try and drain my system. Do not hook this up to a filled system and start trying to pull the fluid out through this. You will absolutely destroy it if nothing bad happens. The worst thing that would happen is you're gonna ruin the pump. There are vacuum fluid pumps that you can use to pull fluid out through vacuum. And I might look into getting one of those in the future, but this was step one, right? This is the part I cared about most because you guys saw, I already sort of do that with this guy to push all the air out and it works well enough. <sighs> I am so, that's not a crack, right? Okay, cool. I am so happy that this worked and I did it with soft tubing, which if there was gonna be a situation where it would be a problem, I would think potentially soft tubing. Rigid tubing would be able to, like nothing will collapse on itself, but even if it did, it won't collapse until it's under that level of pressure, so it's still the same result. There you go. I guarantee you someone is gonna come up with a kit now and be like, wow, we should have done this a long time ago. And they're just not gonna even be like, inspired by JC Sense. To be honest, I was inspired by automotive because this is how we do it with radiators and cars. So it only took me 10 years of water cooling. Actually, no, I've been water cooling for 20 years. It only took me that long to be like, well, better late than never, as my wife always says. <laughs>